Hello everyone, it's me, the Boss Hog, back with another video, this time on income and costs across the month of November. New format, in part because I had to get my computer wiped, uh, so I lost my original format. But anyway, I think this looks pretty new, and um, any feedback, etc. Happy to hear it. Let's do it. So, in terms of the overview for November, actually slightly less good than October, partly though that was because October had a lot of sort of non-work income. As we'll get to in a second, you'll see what the differences are. The salaries, etc., were the same. And in fact, in November, I even had some uh, expenses repaid. But yeah, there were just too many um, favorable things happening on October. So the income reduced and a few costs were a little bit different as well. If we start with the uh, you know, the regular cost. Actually, this was a pretty good month for a couple of reasons. One of them was a a cheaper than expected quarterly bill. Uh, it did arrive late. It should have actually came in October. And then also my daughter's school had an admin issue, basically taking payment for after school club. Uh, so that didn't land in November, even though it should have done. And instead, we'll have a catch up in December. Uh, but still, actually, the, the regular costs were a pleasant surprise. Um, we also though have the other costs, which were the opposite way. Uh, and there's one or two things in there that were pretty eyebrow raising uh, that we'll get to shortly as well. And I would say that investments were really high, which is a good thing. But really, it's a little bit artificial because uh, I'm starting to use their arbitrage, as I've mentioned before, um, for anyone who's uh, new to the channel. Um, you can more or less think of it as, you know, I added three and a half K extra to investments, but only because I put three and a half K on a zero percent uh, credit card. So really, you know, my investments are would have been otherwise 3.5k and the way that I'm looking at this in terms of my wealth right because this isn't wealth this is cash flow the way I'm looking at this in terms of my wealth is actually the investment contribution is the same because you know plus seven minus 3.5 is 3.5 but that's the impact it has from a cash flow perspective uh, so that it, it's actually positive because the the surplus deficit doesn't really land uh, until I have to repay things back. Uh, and even then I can choose to accept it with the interest rate, right? But again, we're, we're storing this money so we can pay it off uh, or transfer it again and basically never pay any interest on it. So overall, I would say that my income was broadly as expected. Regular spend slightly better, but then there are other costs and indeed investments if we're counting uh, that are gonna weigh all of that down. So, um, but we, we're gonna go through all of this and have a look in the details for anyone who just wants to sniff it, that's basically it. I think here I'm gonna do a rolling three months um, and you know we'll, we'll probably start comparing against what my predictions were down here. Um, but yeah, so overall the income was a little bit better, but the costs were a little bit higher than I would have expected. So that sort of pulled everything uh, down. But we're gonna go through this uh, starting with the income next. All right, so next up then we've got our income. Um, so I did get my expenses repaid. Uh, my employer is super quick repaying them, which is lovely um, and pretty significant here. I did have costs for this in both September, so before I started this video series, uh, as well as October. Um, and that was really just related to a business trip to Moldova where I have a, um, a team out there. So I'll try and visit them twice a year. Uh, I did have some winnings from the casino, a much less successful month, to be honest. I went three times and technically one in two of the sessions, but my losing session was much larger than both of my winning combined. So uh, a negative month overall. Still, this is my income. You'll see in a second that the cost here was sort of 1200. Uh, so there was a net loss, um, not the end of the world across the last sort of two months. I'm up 1200 and across the last three months, I'm up about 3K. Um, so I was kind of expecting a rough. Uh, catch up sooner or later you can't keep I've been running extremely favorably uh, so I knew it was coming and it came and it was very painful um, but it is what it is right you're playing uh, cards and it's uh, inevitable still though we did manage to you know cash out 735 uh, so we do count that as income <clears throat> uh, there were no consults this month uh, consults are something I do sort of once every three to four months although they tend to sort of happen in clusters um, and these are sort of industry consults that tend to pay very well. They're sort of a couple of hundred dollars for an hour's worth of speaking. And um, I had one last month, but nothing this month. So that was, and, and likewise, no other either, which included sort of some um, some eBay selling that my sister is doing and we're splitting the money for. So that's fine. Uh, there was a games workshop dividend this month. So that's the uh, dividends there. So that's very nice. And there's uh, been an improvement in our bank cashback as we start to um, open up. Uh, actually, that's from my um, credit card. So that was uh, nice. Uh, just a few quid because I only just got it. But it will add some value and basically pay for itself. It does also cost me a few quid a month as well. So that should be uh, 
should be all good. Uh, so outside of that, as you can see, no changes to the wages or anything like that. Everything else sort of pretty self-explanatory. And really the main difference uh, is that casino uh, win um, in October against November. So that's, uh, that's okay. Uh, without further ado, let's start to have a look at the regular costs. All right, so in terms of the regular costs, um, a lot of these are quite regular, as you'd expect. Uh, however, on the you know a few lines down, you see the school fees ASC there, so after school club. Um, this is about sort of £270 a month, I would have expected for November, um, but it just didn't didn't go through. Uh, and in essence, the, the DD that got set up uh, didn't get set up correctly. So they actually chased me in December um, and then I paid manually. Um, and that's that's now been paid, but obviously this is November, so it's not showing and that's gone through as a zero. Uh, so there will be a catch up for that, but uh, it didn't land in November. Uh, TFL costs were actually quite high. Uh, Transport for London, this is based on all of our tubes, buses, transport in London, basically. Um, and it's pretty much just the fact that me and my wife were traveling every day. I mean, we, we travel quite regularly to school anyway. And, you know, there was um, a, a normal school month, um, but we also had were quite active going to offices. Um, and basically just going around London, uh, did some friend visits as well and a few other things. Uh, so that was quite a high spend. Uh, saying that the month before was lower than I would have expected. And here my expectation is to spend about 250 a month. So I suppose overall it, it evens out. Um, but yeah, I was quite surprised by the 300 plus uh, TFL spend. Um, on the good side, the H&E here, the heating and energy. So I actually budgeted sort of 700 pounds for that. So having it come in at less than 500 was a pleasant surprise. Um, that's a combination of unit costs as well as consumption, both being down. Um, it is kind of what I would have expected and the way that they sort of forward bill us and then credit um, sort of meant that it was based on the previous quarter, which had, again, more expensive everything, right? And um, so it sort of, it, it was favorable and that was a nice, uh, pleasant surprise. Um, we're also sitting on um, some money for my in-laws in an offset account, uh, basically just because they want uh, pound exposure, they're not UK based, so having sort of different currencies available to them is nice. As a result of them putting it into our offset account, we basically give them the interest that we save. Uh, actually, I wish they, I would be very happy if they wanted to store more there. Uh, it's a, a nice way of sort of paying off a mortgage very fast. Uh, and in essence, we're paying them instead of the bank. Um, that switch to me I'd rather do anyway. Um, so that, that started and uh, basically meant that they got 250 quid um, paid into a, a ring-fenced account for them, which doesn't show on any of this stuff, uh, even though I'm technically sitting on it. Uh, I don't include it in this because it's not my, my money. Uh, and in essence, it's, it represents a cost to me and my wife um, as a result of the interest that we're paying them. So just for full disclosure on how that works. Um, there's an interesting one here. I'm going to remove the line that says, you know, Liam, that's, that's the boss hog. Uh, by any other name. Uh, the HMRC repay, so that's the tax man basically for anyone not familiar. Um, so I had a tax bill of uh, 1.8k and my original plan with this was to spread it across 12 months. Uh, there's a few different ways where you can opt to pay, uh, you know, you can change your tax code, you can repay it over an agreed period. Um, but now that I've got this credit card, actually, I just decided to put, you know, the whole 1.8k on my credit card and, you know, it'll, it'll sort itself uh, at the end of the interest free period. And at least I've basically paid off the tax man. And now I just owe the bank, which honestly, I'd rather owe the bank than the tax man because uh, the bank's a lot less scary. Um, so uh, I won't be having a monthly cost here. Right. And instead, what you'll see in the December numbers is a one off cost for the tax man. I've actually already paid it in early December. Um, so it's, it's already there. Um, and yeah, so different change of approach to what I was originally thinking, because when I knocked out this summary, I hadn't got my credit card at the time. So hence the, the change there. Um, the rest, to be honest, would be quite boring. Um, and I, I would expect over time that this should become quite boring. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I want to see. I want to see a certain regularity here to understand, you know, what percentage of our income are we spending on regular costs? That's, that's the key thing. Um, and we'll see how that changes over time. So if that's the regular stuff, let's have a look at the irregular stuff. OK, so in terms of other costs, um, no work travel. Um, I was expecting my wife would have work travel in December. Last year, she went to New York, but basically this year, they instead sort of met in London. Uh, originally, they were also thinking about meeting in Portugal, uh, but they just decided to meet in London, which obviously for us means no travel. Um, so that nothing there um, from that perspective. Um, you can also see here some of my uh, work travel that got reimbursed this month in last month's, right? Not all of it, because it didn't include my flights, 
uh, that I booked the month before, but everything else I spent in Moldova is the 674 there that then got paid as the 957 this month. Outside of that, uh, I do have some plane tickets here, which is basically our Christmas uh, spend uh, or the start of our Christmas spend. Uh, we're going to my in-laws in Poland for a couple of weeks over Christmas. Um, very expensive plane tickets, honestly. Um, we should definitely, like, I think an aspiration for my wife for me is to get a bit more organized with our flights. Um, in the past, we could actually leave it quite late and get like even a Christmas time sort of pay 80 to 100 pounds each. Uh, now, you know, the tickets are just so expensive. And even this was like one of the few reasonable options available without going on to, you know, like national carriers and stuff, which get very expensive pretty quickly. Uh, so we, we could probably be a bit more organized when we're sort of because we roughly know when we're going to be traveling each year. Um, that's definitely uh, something that I want to get better at. Um, <laughs> so the eating out here is pretty disgusting. Um, last month, at least it sort of felt kind of OK, because even like originally when I did the budget, by the way, I put in 200 pounds a month for eating out. And, you know, like that's just even before this as well. September was much higher. October was higher, but at least our shopping bill was reduced. So it was like, OK, well, we cost. £200 more for eating out, but we spent £200 less on shopping. So great. This month, however, basically the shopping was OK, not it was slightly reduced, but nothing like to offset this. And uh, and yeah, we just were quite um, oh, casual with our spend. You know, like I had a day out with my daughter. Uh, my wife had like uh, some uh, bar trips. I had some cafe trips, had a bar trip as well. Um, so it just sort of all added up. I mean, we were expecting it to be a heavy month anyway, because I basically had a, a, a long weekend with my wife, who I, uh, you know, I was really looking forward to like a date night, basically. Uh, so we, we went for a date lunch uh, and did some good damage in London Bridge, uh, three different places there. But again, we, we like to we can spend good money when we put our mind to it. So that, that was expected. But the rest here, the fact that this was still sort of a 650 pounds uh, eating out cost is significantly higher. Um, I think once we get Christmas out of the way, it's going to become a, a target for us to sort of get a little bit more disciplined. A lot of this stuff outside of that 350 is, like I say, just five pounds here, 10 pounds there. They're sort of like cafe spends or pub spends. Uh, I'm, de I'm, I'm say definitely, I'm probably the biggest contributor, but it's only like a sort of 60, 40, 65, 35 kind of split. Uh, so there, there's definitely some room for both of us to improve, but I think more of it on me um than my wife so that was a pretty scary figure to be perfectly honest with you also as well i would point out that gifts remain much higher than we were expecting my wife did comment that last month there was a lot more presents uh is in like true gifts this month there was a lot of things that we were like gifting ourselves so the main one for me personally was that i got myself some adjustable weights and that was like 125 quid so that's um again a, a present to myself to try and get myself into better shape um but it, it had an impact so uh, her suggestion which i think makes a ton of sense is to basically have you know presents and then sort of treats uh stuff for ourselves so that we can sort of see this over time but i do still expect to have a relatively expensive december for very obvious reasons i think right christmas um so uh, it, it is what it is um and again when i first started this my assumption was well my i guess yeah my assumption was that um, a lot of these costs actually do have an element of recurring, right? Like we just don't really keep track of them or remember them because, you know, 50 quid here or 20 quid there and suddenly, but you're doing that like every weekend and suddenly before you know, it's like 300 pound a month kind of cost that you don't think about, which again, over time, it would be interesting to see what our sort of monthly average is um, and whether this is just fairly normal uh, as our kind of unknown spend, uh, we will see. Uh, again, I mentioned the casino. This is across three sessions. Um, the, there was one that was really nasty that I had like um, a 900 pound loss in, which is um, one of my biggest losses ever. Just nothing went right. Uh, probably should have walked away after my second bullet. So then it would have only cost me 600. Um, but just uh, again, hindsight's a wonderful thing, right? I've had times where I used the third bullet and then, uh, you know, had a miraculous recovery and managed to climb out. So yeah. Um, but it, it wasn't meant to be. And again, I, I, I sort of because um, I've been running so well, I actually took it quite gracefully. Um, I, I'm not a particularly um, bad loser anyway. I sort of I know what I'm getting into when I go into play and I never spend more than I can afford to lose. Uh, so it, it's OK. Uh, and yeah, I just was like, ouch. Um, 
And I wasn't even going to play a third session. And then I bumped into somebody when I was uh, in Stratford. And they were like, oh, do you want to go and play some uh, blackjack? So I played some fairly low level, uh, low limit blackjack, uh, but actually did quite well for the stake I was playing at. Uh, so at least that was a little bit of a, a softening on the uh, the earlier thing there. So, but that that's a significant uh, cost um, as a result. Um, and outside of that, probably the grooming here and the other. So uh, a lot of this stuff is my daughter's clothes. Um, at the moment, she just seems to keep growing. Um, she's really tall. And yeah, she just seems to be going for a bit of a growth, a growth spurt at the moment. So all of her clothes are kind of being replaced, uh, especially for December. Uh, this is more of my wife's job, to be honest with you. I, I confess this is something that uh, she takes care of. Um, but again, daughter's clothes. It's one of those uh, kind of, uh, it is a priority basically, right? To make sure that she's uh, well clothed is, a, uh, is an important thing. So uh, no issues there. It does also include like her haircut. My wife had a haircut, but nothing uh, special. And I desperately need a haircut. Uh, so I'll, I'll put mine into December. But that, that was the situation there. I also need to get my adaptive mind sorted. I'm really annoyed it's still there. Every time I see it, it it's kind of frustrates me. It's, it's actually a very fun uh, game that my uh, my daughter played months ago and that I asked my bank to cancel and they still haven't cancelled it. And it's just like one of those things that I just need to kind of sort it with my bank. But it's only eight quid a month, so it doesn't bother me until I do this. And then every time I'm like, it's still there. Uh, so that, that's the that's the situation and it's like ten dollars i think which is why it's like a weird amount difference each month is basically currency movements uh but yeah i, I need to get that sorted basically it's on my to-do list as a pretty low priority but it's uh it's still there so uh, that's that's the situation with our other costs for november all right so um investments nothing into my ISO there which is the top row and um, i completed that in i want to say september um, for the year and now I'm averaging only into my wife's ISA. I originally didn't expect to do 3300. Uh, I think it was 2750 was the, the target in order to max out by the end of the financial year. Um, but again, decided to add a little bit more as um, things are running nicely. So that was uh, a nice thing to be able to do. Um, also as well, because uh, I didn't have an active direct debit set up for my daughter's ISA, so it didn't come out in October. So I basically did a, a catch up in November. So two, it's a hundred pound a month basically. So the uh, the November was a catch up for both of those. And even though we could technically do more than a hundred pound a month into my daughter's ISA, we kind of don't want to, um, because we I just um it's a concern for my wife and I that when she turns 18 you know she's not going to be the most sensible kid she's probably going to waste a lot of it and to be fair even at 100 pound a month you know we're sort of expecting her to get about 40,000 um as an 18 year old and you know we're we're we're, talk, we're talking about um whether we should get ourselves involved or incentivize her to sort of invest that money or etc ultimately I have no idea what my daughter's going to be like as an 18 year old I don't want her to kind of waste money unnecessarily. 40K for an 18 year old is plenty. And it'll be interesting to see what she does with it. And, um, you know, we'll just respond uh, depending on what she does. Uh, but that, that's what she's going to be getting, which is 40 grand more than I got turning 18. Um, and it should be fine. So that's our, that's our decision there. Like, even if we were, like, no matter how much we earn, basically, I don't see my wife and I changing the amount we contribute into my daughter's ISA for that reason we just uh, it's not something we want to do it's uh, it's a simple uh, simple statement um, I also put a lot more into premium bonds than I was originally planning so um, the target since a few months ago is to put at least 500 pounds a month into premium bonds and basically over time use it as one of our emergency funds as a kind of you know wrap like it's about four percent return right in premium bonds so it's it's okay um, for safe money it's also tax efficient for me and my wife who are both higher rate taxpayers um, so we do want to build up our premium bonds over time it's a good place once we sort of max out our ices um, as well as an emergency fund which we don't really have one at the moment um, so we are doing uh, at least 500 a month but again I've been able to run ahead a little bit just where we've had either casino winnings last month um, and this month is kind of influenced by the fact that we have uh, the credit card um, which is also helping. On top of that, I decided to put 2K into cash savings. Uh, so this is a, a separate, a, a different account, but another account linked to our offset mortgage. So basically as a result of this being in here, um, it reduces the amount of interest I have to pay on my mortgage. But me and my wife have decided to keep paying 2.2K. Um, and what that means ultimately is we're paying off the capital faster. Um, so th this is sort of um, the nice thing about offset. And again, here, having the combination of sort of premium bonds 
as a sort of true emergency fund and then the cash savings here um is a nice a nice thing so at the moment our cash savings are basically this i think it's 2050 uh in total um, but the plan here will be to add this um, reasonably quickly um as much as possible so um, again this is quicker than i was originally expecting before i got the credit card and um is, is a nice thing to be able to do basically so that's the uh, that's the situation there so that's everything for November. Uh, next, we're going to have a look at December, uh, which again is quite different uh, as my wife gets her bonus in December. So uh, let's do that now. All right, so I'm expecting December to be a stellar. This is going to be my wife's uh, bonus. That does include everything right for the income, but it is definitely um, going to have a significant contribution from my wife's bonus. So that will be nice. I don't know the exact figure, but that's a, a reasonable guidance, uh, we believe, based on various targets etc so we shall see and um, as i mentioned for myself i have a 1.8k uh, tax bill that uh, comes due my wife actually has a 4k one which is um is interesting it, it, like when my wife basically returned to work for the little for a, a month she wasn't getting taxed correctly and it was one of those things where we sort of thought it would work itself out in like you know the new tax year and then nothing happened and we kind of knew sooner or later that the tax man would find out or, or realize but actually at the same time we weren't really 100 percent sure where for it wasn't genuine so we were like you know let's let's just not say anything and you know if it comes due it comes due we'll handle it and if not then um you know fine um maybe it's correct uh but anyway we, we were suspicious we we it seemed too good to be true we couldn't really understand it um but again there was a lot of complications with things like um leave and paternity leave and then my wife changed jobs as well very like not super soon, soon afterwards but you know the next tax year so we weren't sure whether like that was in the emergency tax code that she then got but anyway long story short although she is still questioning a few elements of this um i don't expect it to be reduced more than about 10 percent. it probably is around the right kind of figure my wife has a few questions um to resolve um but yeah so so i've already paid mine it will be in december and I put 4K in there. If it's if she ends up paying less, it will just be a pleasant surprise against expectations. Um, and again, here, just to be super clear as well, we are also going to put this onto our credit card. So again, I've got 13K onto my credit card, 0%. Uh, so it's a nice way to sort of park this and in essence, spread it across a year um, and get the tax man off our back so we don't have to deal with the tax man. And uh, we'll have all of our tax affairs up to date, which will be nice. Um, investments will also be super high. Um, basically, anything left over we're going to be putting into investments. Uh, I could have technically have even put an additional 2K um, into the investments, um, but I've left that left over. Um, and the, the way that this more or less works is I've put in an extra 5K uh, into the investments, uh, really because of my wife's bonus that that money is left over, uh, because otherwise it would have been about 3.5K. So it's, it's in essence assuming 5K into investments and then 2K into spare. But I imagine I'll also end up putting that into the, the Virgin Money uh, offset account as well. So that, that's roughly what I expect to happen uh, next month. Uh, and then on top of that as well, because I'm going to be flying out with my family on the 19th of December, I think the, you know, the shopping is going to be reduced and the eating out will probably also be reduced. But at the same time, when we're over there, like when it's not Christmas, uh, we do help with the shopping, including the, the, the financing of it, right? We buy it. Um, and me and my wife, you know, we're, we're going to have at least one date night while we're out there as well. So, again, although it's Poland, you know, we're going to go for a nice hotel um, have a nice dinner. So I'm sure there'll still be some damage there as well. So uh, broadly speaking, I expect it to even itself out where you will have fewer costs. Then we'll also have, uh, you know, more costs uh, whilst we're out there as well. So that's uh, that's my expectation. So uh, anyway, we'll, we'll review this again in another month. Uh, and that will also be the first time we'll have three months worth of uh, real data. So that'll be interesting to sort of start looking at averages and totals um, and et cetera. So that, that should be fun as well. Anyway, this is more uh, learning, insight, et cetera, for myself and to understand where the hell all our money goes. Uh, hopefully, again, it's an interesting glimpse into what uh, two working professionals living in London with a small child um, looks like. And again, it's expensive. Um, so even though we are earning uh, well, um, you know, and making contributions. It doesn't yet feel like we're rolling in the money. Um, and hopefully over time, as we sort of add to our investments, we'll, we'll start to feel like we're rolling in the money, um, but we're not We're not really there yet. It still feels quite difficult. Um, and we, you know, we have to be reasonably disciplined uh, in order to get to that stage. But at the same time, I think we're doing okay. Uh, so I don't have anything else to add, any questions, normal stuff, etc. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I've been the boss of, and good luck with everything. Bye for now.